American track star Noah Lyles caused controversy in a press conference in 2023 by claiming that NBA stars do not deserve to be called world champions. The thing that hurts me the most is that I have to watch the NBA Finals and they have world champion on their head. World champion of what? <laughs> the United States? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I, I love the U.S. at times. <laughs> But that ain't the world. That is not the world. We are the world. We have almost every country out here fighting, thriving, putting on their flag to show that they are represented. There ain't no flags in the NBA. <laughs> Due to the fact that only American teams play in the league, and those comments are what has led to many Americans disliking the athlete. In a press conference last year, the 27-year-old said, you know the thing that hurts me the most? I have to watch the NBA Finals, and they have world champion on their heads. World champion of what? The United States? Don't get me wrong, I love the US at times, but that ain't the world. That is not the world. We are the world. We have almost every country out here fighting, thriving, and putting on a flag to show that they are represented. There ain't no flags in the NBA. We got to do more. We got to be presented to the world. I love the track community, but we can only do so much within our own bubble. There's a whole world out there. Lyle's comments, unsurprisingly, did not go down well with many within the NBA. A backlash was led by Kevin Durant, with the two-time MVP responding to his claims by posting on his ex account. Somebody help this brother out. Draymond Green, a four-time world champion of the sport, also responded by saying on Instagram, when smart goes wrong. NBA journalist Stephen A. Smith, meanwhile, said, The NBA currently features 120 players from 40 countries and six continents on its roster for last season. And it's increased now. So how is that not global? How is that not the world champions? The best players from around the world descend upon America to join the National Basketball Association. The international players, rather than electing to stay in their respective countries to play basketball, they want to come to the NBA because it's the best basketball league on the planet. Lyle's comments did receive some support, however. Fellow sprinter Shakari Richardson said, I'm standing with Noah on this one. The organization, NBA, have players from different countries, but do they compete against different countries? You have to go against the world in order to be a world champion. People from outside sport have also applauded the comments, with television personality Piers Morgan saying via X. The cojones of this guy calling out NBA stars for pretending to be world champions, when they're not, then beating the world to be Olympic 100 Miller champion, are gigantic. Congrats at at Lyles Noah, you talked the talked and just walked the walk. This isn't the first time that comments from Lyles have caused controversy. At the World Championships last year, he took aim at his own sport by criticizing previous champions, including Usain Bolt, who retired in 2017. As I look around this World Championships, I don't see Bolt, I don't see Asafa, Powell, I don't see Johan, Blake, and he's still running. Where are all these great champions? We look at them, as we're walking through the tunnel, at all of these previous World Champions. Why are they not here? Lyle's comments drew strong criticism from several prominent NBA players on social media. Kevin Durant said, Somebody help this brother. Damian Lillard, Devin Booker, Draymond Green, and Aaron Gordon also expressed disagreement. ESPN's Stephen A. Smith initially called Lyle's flagrantly ignorant, but later apologized. The players argued that the NBA is still a global league since it features the best basketball talent from around the world even if most teams are located in the U.S. For the 20-23-24 season, the NBA had a record 125 international players from 40 countries on opening night rosters. However, some NBA players like Giannis Antetokounmpo and CJ McCollum agreed with Lyles that the Olympics or FIBA World Cup are more fitting venues for crowning a true world champion in basketball. Lyles also received support from fellow track athletes like Shikari Richardson. Outside of sports, figures like Piers Morgan praised Lyles for having the cojones to call out the NBA and back it up with his own world championship performance. Lyles' surprise at the controversy.
In a later interview, Lyles expressed surprise at the scale of the backlash since he had made similar comments before without much reaction. He felt most of the criticism came from within the U.S. while those outside the country tended to agree with him. The controversy resurfaced leading up to the 2024 Olympics, but there haven't been reports of lingering tensions between Lyles and the NBA players on the U.S. Olympic team. Lyles aims to win gold in the 100 meters, 200 meters, and 400 meters relay in Paris. Is there a newfound respect that should be towards you? Ah, uh, no, no. If you like me, if you like me. If you don't, you don't. I'm not gonna hate anybody that doesn't like me. But uh, all I'm gonna say is, you know, don't downplay other people just because you don't like someone. Just go to the guy you like. But I, uh, I appreciate anybody who has found respect for me. But to be honest, this crowd, this crowd was amazing. This field was amazing. This is the exact field that I wanted to show up at an Olympic final. Because if I was to lose to, you know, any of those guys in the top three, I would have said, you know, that's well deserved. Talk to me about the race though, and how close it was at the time, a personal yeah. best. Yeah, it was a very close race. You know, I'm glad I had Oblique Seville next to me because I was like, yo, I need somebody to put that pressure on me early. Um, I know that in a lot of races, he's been like one or two lanes away from me, and uh, he's been able to get out just in that, that, dry, uh, that acceleration phase, and I've just been missing it. And I was like, nah, now that you're right next to me, I'm going to make sure that I cover that. And then I, after I passed him, I saw Kashane out there, and I was like, just do what I do, hit my top end speed, you know, let it work. And uh, to be honest, I didn't know if I had it. You know, I leaned. But I didn't know what I had. You know, me and Kashane were at the, the end waiting for our names to come up. And I came up and I said, I'm going to be honest, man. I think you got that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But my, my name came up and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm amazing. <laughs> I, and you are. What, what do you take away from this in terms of your legacy? How do you describe it in this moment? In this moment, I've waited a long time. I've, I've seen Jamaicans dominate the 100 and the 200 for so long. And I remember growing up saying, when it's my turn, I'm going to make sure that the U.S. is on top. And he, here it is. Here's my my time and my, you know, my journey, my moment, and I've. It's such a beautiful thing to see. Enjoy the moment, brother. I thank you. Thank you. Um, Usain said, um, Usain Bolt said that um, he knows what you need to do to break the world record, and he's not going to say it. Um, I'm sure you saw that. Um, did you and your coach look at that, or you already know what you need to do yourself? I'm gonna do what I'm doing. I mean, what's the? I mean, if he knows and he's not gonna share it, why would I listen? <laughs> And, and Kenneth uh, Wardley last week, he said it's going to last just for a couple of weeks. I'm sorry, what? Kenneth Wardley in this 400 last week, um, he said it's going to last just for a couple of weeks yeah, till you go on the track. Until New York. <laughs> New York Grand Prix. Uh, you have any time fixed in your mind? Wardley? Uh, okay. <laughs> That's all I needed. Well, what did I run last time I opened up? Well, fair enough. And what did I run the time before that? Fair enough. And we're on the top for that. <laughs> what, All right, then. <laughs> what, what, one, one more from, from Bahamas. You you talked about them keeping the group together. You, Kenny, Kyrie King. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now you just talked about how good Kristen Freddie is now. I mean, obviously, it's going to boil down to the national trials and how fast you guys go on the line. Are you still adamant that you should keep the group together or, I mean, make some tweak based on how fast the guys coming? You know, I was just looking at uh, Jamaica is, you know, making a push to try and keep as many people as possible as wild cards and I think that's a great idea because they did form some type of chemistry even if not a lot it's some and that's better than none um, and we as Americans there's so many of us that are so good you never know who's going to be on the team so having some people that's on the team that are going to be wild cards um, that were on that you know but uh, Bahamas team I think is very important because they have some type of chemistry Olympian Noah Lyles may be the fastest man in the world, but with his girlfriend, Jamaican athlete Junelle Bromfield, he took his time. The couple met in 2017 through social media, and after months of talking, they met up in person. However, things didn't go quite as well during their first date, and the two decided to stay friends rather than pursue anything more. Whenever I get in a relationship, I'm very serious, Lyles explained during an interview on the Fast Lane Lifestyle podcast. After that failed first date, the pair remained in touch. In 2022, Lyles decided to give Romance another shot and asked her out again. Since then, they've become inseparable. We're going to grow old together and it's going to be forever, he remarked on the Fast Lane Lifestyle podcast. As of now, they're not only living together in Florida, but they also trained for the Olympics with one another. Although they keep things professional on the track, they have plenty of public displays of affection on social media. In April 2024, Bromfield even shared the latest romantic gesture from Lyles, a car. 
She posted a video of Lyles unveiling a brand new Hyundai Genesis on Instagram with the caption, first car. Paperwork took so long my excitement ran out. Thank you, baby. So who is Noah Lyles' girlfriend? Here's everything to know about Junelle Bromfield and her relationship with the World Championship winner. Bromfield was born on February 8, 1998 in Black River, Jamaica. Lyles has traveled with Bromfield to her hometown many times and has embraced her culture wholeheartedly. During a 2024 press conference, he wore a Jamaican-inspired Adidas kit, a fashion statement he credited to his girlfriend. He also expressed his own love of the country, telling reporters, when you go to Jamaica, you're treated like a freaking rock star. Janelle Bromfield of Team Jamaica competes during the women's 400 Miller Round 1 heats on day 6 of the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games at Alexander Stadium on August 03, 2022 in Birmingham, England. David Ramos Getty. Like Lyles, Bromfield is an Olympic-level track and field athlete with plenty of awards to her name. She's also a sprinter, while Lyles primarily competes in the 100 and 200 meters. Bromfield specializes in the 400, and during the 2020 Summer Olympics, she even won a bronze medal, just like her beau. The couple will also have a chance to compete alongside each other at the 2024 Summer Games in Paris. Lyles will be competing in the men's 100 mils and 200 mils, while Bromfield will be representing Jamaica in the women's 4400 miler relay and the women's 400 milers. After Bromfield secured her spot on the Olympic team, Lyles was quick to congratulate her on X, formerly known as Twitter, writing, That's what I'm talking about! At Junelle Bromfield is going to the Olympics in the 400 Maizia. Track's biggest power couple is going on two years together. The pair, who started dating in summer of 2022, went Instagram official a few months later in December. Bromfield accompanied Lyles to the USATF Night of Legends celebration, where he took home the Male Athlete of the Year award. The next day, both shared images of their red carpet date night on social media. 23, Bromfield marked their first anniversary with a sweet message on Instagram. Cheers to seven years of friendship, six months of dating, one year of being your partner, and to forever loving you, she captioned the post. Prior to their 2022 romance, the two were friends for several years. During a joint interview on the Fast Lane Lifestyle podcast, the couple spoke candidly about their relationship, saying Bromfield initially reached out to Lyles via social media. I slid in the DMs, she admitted, laughing. In 2017, she slides in my DMs and we started chit-chatting a little. Lyles then shared, adding that at first, he was very defensive and had his guard up. He went on to describe how their relationship unfolded over the next few months as they spoke more often and even played iPhone games together. The following year, they finally met up in person, but surprisingly, he said, they just didn't click on that first date. It didn't click at all, Bromfield added with a laugh. It was like, no, let's just be friends. They maintained a friendship and a flirtation for several years and they didn't talk much while in other relationships. Eventually, in 2022, they reconnected when Lyles reached out to ask Bromfield if she wanted to get together and give it another shot. For their second date, nearly five years after they first met, the pair went out for sushi, where Lyles taught her how to use chopsticks. Lyles has been extremely open about his own mental health, sharing his use of antidepressants in 2020 and the impact it had on his training. Just because I'm struggling doesn't mean that I'm going to quit, the athlete told people. I'm a human being. I'm not a superhero. I have feelings. I have emotions. You know, I'm a fighter. <laughs> you know, I get, that's how I made it this far, in fact. You know, I'm, just because I'm struggling doesn't mean that I'm going to quit. You know, I'm very you know, adamant that I don't believe in really giving up or failing is not, you know, not succeeding. It's when you have completely stopped and give it up and not give it your money. Yeah, uh, me and my brother have basically, uh, he's about a year and four days younger than me. So there's not a day that I don't remember him being there. So we've been together forever. And we you know, went on this journey of making the Olympic team together. Uh, 
we were planning to go and make it in 2016. Uh, I got fourth, unfortunately he got injured in that year. And then we came into 2021 and he only made it to the semifinals and I was able to make the team this time. But especially with not being able to have family at the Olympics, it's been very hard. I was just on the phone with my mom as I was rushing to get ready to come over here. And she has at least called me like three times a day, which is only one more than she normally calls me. But the fact that I'm in a 13 hour time difference means that she's calling me more in less time. And I'm just like, you must really miss me <laughs> for somebody who keeps calling me. And she's like, I do miss you. And I'm just like, like, Ma, you know we, we've been apart for like months before. We did go through COVID. It's like, yeah, but you didn't win a medal from that time. And I was just like, yeah, that's true. So I know that you know, I miss sharing moments with them, especially right now, which is probably one of the bigger moments of my life. And you know, I know they miss me too. So it's, it's definitely something that you want to share a moment like this, have somebody to attach to and be like, you know, we did this, you know, we've been through the journey together. And you know, it sucks that they're not here. It definitely is a moment where a lot of people can look back and say, oh, you know, these athletes actually have feelings. Because I've been very vocal of, I'm a human being. I'm not a superhero, I'm not, you know, a, a mutant. <laughs> you know, I have feelings, I have emotions. Just because I go out there and run fast doesn't mean that I don't come home and hurt and, you know, get tired and want to go have fun, stuff like that, you know. A lot of people will see athletes as they put them on this humongous pedestal because they think just because it's something that they can't do that, you know, it's something that nobody can do. And that's not the truth. In all actuality, we all have gifts and abilities and it's just we found our ability and we honed and, you know, really worked at it. But anybody can do that. You know, finding your gift and honing it and putting all into it, you can do that. And of course, sometimes some gifts are praised more than others, but that doesn't mean it's less important. His advocacy has had a major impact on his fans as well as his girlfriend. I started therapy about two years ago because my boyfriend is big on therapy and felt I needed it, Bromfield said in an interview with The Inside Lane. It's been really helpful because I've been dealing with survivor's guilt, which was weighing on me, now, I feel like I can live my life fully and enjoy every moment because life is short. Janelle, I saw what that meant to you, but I need you to tell us what that meant to you. Oh, God. Oh, my. Honestly, it means a lot because it feels as if a burden has lifted off my shoulder. Like for the past couple of years, it's been very hard mentally because I have a lot of loss in my family and I'm just recovering and you know, running track with love again that I know I have from the, for the sports because I've been doing it since I've been eight years old. It's brought me so far and I'm just, just grateful to be here. What's the one thing you're proud of yourself for executing in that race? Oh God, <laughs> in that race, I'm just proud that I ran my own race because I could have gone with the whole field, but I decided, to, you know what? I'm going to sit back and just wait for that 100 meter kick. And that is where I know I trust in myself because I'm from an 800 and 1500 background. So I'm like, if all those girls can finish strong, I can finish stronger. You've been experiencing a lot of loss in your family and you've been able to come out on the track and give us your all. That's incredible. I really hope that you're proud of yourself for that bit alone, because that's not easy. No. That's not easy. What have you been doing in terms of self-care, in terms of looking after yourself and showing yourself love? Okay, so I started therapy like two years ago because my boyfriend is big on therapy and he felt as if I needed it too. And it honestly has helped a lot because I feel as if I've been suffering with survivor's guilt and it was basically laying on my shoulder. So now I'm like, you know, I gotta live my life and just enjoy every moment of it of it because life is short oh i want to big up my family like my sister took a bus all the way to kingston to see me like last night she couldn't even go back home because there wasn't any bus going to the country i want to big up my boyfriend 
I want to big up his mom because, you know, when I went to Florida, I wasn't driving and she took me to training and back every day and it was like 40 minutes. So that's a support that I'm extremely grateful for. Along with his influence on mental health care, Bromfield told the Inside Lane that her relationship with Lyles gave her a stronger support system. In particular, she opened up about her close bond with his family, specifically his mom, Keisha Kane. I want to give a big shout out to my boyfriend and his mom because when I went to Florida, I wasn't driving, and she took me to training and back every day, which was like 40 minutes, she said. That's a support that I'm extremely grateful for. At some point after the pair started dating, Bromfield moved to Florida to join a track and field training group. Instead of cohabiting with Lyles, though, she initially lived with his mom, she explained on the Fast Lane Lifestyle podcast. His mom was like, you can't live by yourself. You've got to come and live with us. So I lived there, and she took me to practice every single morning and picked me up, she said. She now lives with me, Lyles added. My sister, my mom, my pops, they were heartbroken. Although the two Olympic sprinters are in the same training group now, they keep their romantic life and their running life separate. Even before we started dating, we had a very good balance, Lyles told Fastlane Lifestyle Podcast. We'd show up to quite a few track meets that we were both at, and we weren't dating at the time. But nobody would know that we knew each other, he said. We had our own mindset and our own headspace. Their relationship may have changed, but that boundary has remained the same. She won't even let me call her baby at practice, he said. Off the track, they unwind in a playful way. We love to dance and we love to dance together, Lyle said. That's one of our main hobbies. He's even shared some of their dance moves on social media interview on the Inside Track podcast. Lyles spoke about his strong relationship with Bromfield. It has taught me a lot of patience, and I believe this is my best relationship ever, he said. The athlete went on to say that they prioritize good communication as a couple, particularly since they have different needs. He explained that while he prefers to talk about conflicts right away, Bromfield typically needs some time and space to clear her head. Although they've learned to adapt to one another, they also accept one another for exactly who they are. When we became friends, I told him that I liked him because of his brutal honesty, Brumfield said on the Fast Lane Lifestyle podcast. That's what drew me to him. As for Lyles, being understood and accepted for his blunt honesty was what sealed the deal. Hearing stuff like that, I was like, oh my gosh, I need this woman in my life, he said. I already liked you, but that's a solidified answer of like, okay, we're going to grow old together, and it's going to be forever, and it's going to be constant, he shared. Hearing things like that is like, yeah, I'd want a woman like that to raise my kids. Now to the Paris Games and a big day for Team USA. American swimmers set two world records. Gymnast Suni Lee adding another medal to her collection. But all eyes were on the track where Noah Lyles hoped to prove that he is the world's fastest man. ABC's Inez de la Quatara is watching it all. Noah Lyles was dead last in the 100 minister field nearly halfway through the race. How did he come out on top in one of the most competitive editions of the race ever? Since last August, Noah Lyles has stood firm and unequivocal in his belief that the title of world's fastest man belongs to him. On Sunday night at the Stade de France, he proved it. With a personal best 9.784 second time that edged him past a world-class field full of elite sprinters, Lyles walked away with his first Olympic gold medal in the 100-meter final. He earned the victory by beating the man with the world's fastest time this year, Jamaica's Kashani Thompson, by 0.005 of a second. We were waiting for the names to pop up, and I'm going to be honest, I came over to Thompson and I was like, I think you got that one, big dog, Lyles said in his post-race news conference. Something said I need to lean, and I was like, I'm going to lean because it's that type of race. It was the closest 100-meter final since at least Moss in 1980 or perhaps ever. Back then, Great Britain's Alan Wells narrowly beat Silvio Leonard in 10.25 seconds in an era when timing didn't go down to the thousandths of a second. According to Omega, the official timekeeper of all Olympics events, at the 65.15 meter mark, Lyles hit his peak speed and he was trailing at that point. That peak reached 43.6 km per hour, or 27.1 meter per hour, and he maintained that rate the rest of the race. No Olympic champion. The thing is that you embrace pressure 
so very well and come out on top. Is there a newfound respect that should be towards you? Uh, no. No. If you like me, if you like me. If you don't, you don't. I'm not going to hate anybody that doesn't like me. But uh, all I'm going to say is, you know, don't downplay other people just because you don't like someone. Just go to the guy you like. But I, uh, I appreciate anybody who has found respect for me. But to be honest, this crowd, this crowd was amazing. This field was amazing. This is the exact field that I wanted to show up at an Olympic final. Because if I was to lose the, you know, any of those guys in the top three, I would have said, you know, that's well deserved. What's crazy is my Ralph Mann, before I left for Paris, he's like, this is how close first and second is going to be away from each other, Lyle said, holding his hand up with a narrow space between his index finger and thumb. I can't believe how right he was. Lyles is the first American to win the celebrated race since Justin Gatlin in 2004. If Lyles makes the 200-meter finals Wednesday night, he'll have an opportunity to claim a second gold medal. Lyles' only other Olympic medal is a bronze, which he earned in the 200 at the Tokyo Games three years ago. Sunday's 100-meter final included the defending Olympic gold medalist at the distance, Marcel Jacobs of Italy, Thompson, the Jamaican who entered with the world's fastest time this year, and two of Lyles' American teammates, Kenny Bednarik and Fred Curley. Curley came in third, earning bronze in 9.81 seconds. Bednarek finished seventh with a time of 9.88 seconds. 9.79 seconds. It was a really close one. Same clocking as Noah Lyles. Y your thoughts in the immediate aftermath of this final? Um, honestly, I really enjoyed myself. Um, it's my first Olympics. I'm really grateful. Um, the only thing that I'd say, I should be more patient. Because... The way I, I should have run the race, I guess I didn't trust my speed like I should have, like previous times. But I know I'm inexperienced. It's not an excuse. I have to just add up and overcome. Do a little better from here. Thompson's time in the final was only 0.02 of a second slower than what he posted at Jamaican trials earlier this summer. That blistering 9.77 second showing seemed a clear indication he would end up on the podium in Paris. I'm going to be disappointed, but I'm super happy and grateful at the same time," Thompson said. I just got to take it as what it is and just move forward from here. It appeared Thompson was leading for much of the sprint, until Lyles bolted in across the final 10 meters. Even then, it seemed evident the race was heading toward a thrilling photo finish. I wasn't patient enough with my speed myself," Thompson said. During the Sami final round an hour and a half earlier, Team Jamaica appeared to put the rest of the runners on notice. Thompson's 9.80 Sami final sprint was the fastest of the round. Just behind him, in a personal record 9.81 seconds, was fellow Jamaican Oblique Seville, who ran in a separate heat that included Lyles. Seville, 9.91 seconds. I want to get your immediate reaction to that race. I'm very disappointed, knowing that I could have run better, but I can't. I can't really complain because the same injury that I went to Dr. Muller for, it's the same one. Um, actually came back in the, into the finals and it's just unfortunate to me knowing that if you had made the finals and leave in the finals without that individual medal. Seville had history with Lyles, having faced him in the Bahamas in June. Seville won it, sneaking just past Lyles in 9.82 seconds. Lyles finished 0.03 of a second later, going to Jamaica and getting beat by Oblique and still saying I ran 85 and I'm still constantly moving forward and moving forward, Lyles said. I knew that when the time came for me to be able to say, this is the final, this is where I need to put it together, I was going to do it. It was after Lyles won the 100-meter World Championship in Budapest, Hungary, last August, when he began leaning into the world's fastest man nickname. Everybody knows that the title goes to the Olympic champion and the world champion, Lyles said last week, which I am one of, and soon to be another one of. Those words proved to be prophetic. Lyles will now turn his focus on the 200 meter and the 4x400 meters. It remains up in the air about whether he will be part of the 4x400 meters relay, but he was a part of the silver medal winning team at this year's World Indoor Championships. In an interview with Fox News Digital in March, Lyles said a friend told him, Forget three, you need to go after four. 
Do something no one's ever done. When you want to talk about being the greatest, that's what you have to achieve. So, I announced that that is a goal of mine to complete. Why not do it on the biggest stage, the Olympics? Lyle said of a potential fourth Olympic event, track legend Carl Lewis recently told Fox News Digital that the sport needs Lyles to dominate these games. I think the sport needs someone like him that's a champion. He's the defending champion, the fastest man in the world right now, and we need someone to grab onto. I think he's the perfect guy to do that, and I'm excited about that," Lewis told Fox News Digital in a recent interview. It's really exciting. I think it's exciting for the sport. I think the sport needs someone like him that's a champion. I mean, he's the defending champion. He's the fastest man in the world right now, and we need someone to grab onto, and I think he's a perfect kind of guy that can do that, and I'm excited about it. I, I think track does better when we do have a superstar. That's why if Noah was able to win, it, I think he would elevate the sport as well. Because it, as opposed to saying, I wonder who's going to win, people want to say, I want him or I don't want him. I think track does better when we do have a superstar. That's why I think if Noah were to win, he would elevate the sport as well. As opposed to saying, I wonder who's going to win, people want to say, I want him or I don't want him. They want to root for someone or root against someone. I think it creates more intensity when you have someone that dominates, and that's been throughout history. People have really gravitated to the sport when people really dominated more. One down, at least two to go. Noah Lyles was dead last in the 100-meter field nearly halfway through the race. How did he come out on top in one of the most competitive editions of the race ever? Since last August, Noah Lyles has stood firm and unequivocal in his belief that the title of world's fastest man belongs to him. Lyles, what's the biggest difference between Noah in Tokyo and Noah in Paris? I'd say it's definitely uh, the joy, the joy I have in my heart. It's a lot stronger. It's nah, not depressed and it's ready to go. It's ready to enjoy time and energy and be in the moment here. You're bringing us joy. How much are you enjoying that rivalry with Jamaica? Hey, I'm here for anybody who wants to take the crown. Now that's what I'm all about, competitors and competing at the highest level. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. On Sunday night at the Stade de France, he proved it with a personal best 9.78 second time that edged him past a world-class field full of elite sprinters, Lyles walked away with his first Olympic gold medal in the 100-meter final. He earned the victory by beating the man with the world's fastest time this year, Jamaica's Keyshane Thompson, by 0.005 of a second. We were waiting for the names to pop up, and I'm going to be honest, I came over to Thompson and I was like, I think you got that one, big dog. Lyles said in his post-race news conference. Something said I need to lean, and I was like, I'm going to lean because it's that type of race. It's a clean start and what a race. A huge roar from the expectant crowd. Great start from Coleman, we expect that. Can Lyles come through? It's very, very tight. It's Noah Lyles! The champion roars once more. Tobogo ran really well on the far side, but it's Noah Lyles who has delivered on his promise. A great, great run from Coleman, but he's not quite the man he used to be. Noah Lyles promised us gold. It was the closest 100-meter final since at least Moscow in 1980, or perhaps ever. Back then, Great Britain's Alan Wells narrowly beat Silvio Leonard in 10.25 seconds in an era when timing didn't go down to the thousandths of a second. According to Omega, the official timekeeper of all Olympics events, at the 65.15 meter mark, Lyles hit his peak speed, and he was trailing at that point. That peak reached 43.6 km per hour, or 27.1 mile per hour, and he maintained that rate the rest of the race. What's crazy is my biomechanist's Ralph Mann, before I left for Paris, he's like, this is how close first and second is going to be away from each other. Lyles said, holding his hand up with a narrow space between his index finger and thumb. I can't believe how right he was. Lyles is the first American to win the celebrated race since Justin Gatlin in 2004. Sunday's 100-meter final included the defending Olympic gold medalist at the distance, Marcel Jacobs of Italy. Thompson, the Jamaican who entered with the world's fastest time this year, 9.77, and two of Lyles' American teammates, Kenny Bednarik and Fred Curley.
Curley came in third, earning bronze in 9.81 seconds. Bednarik finished seventh with a time of 9.88 seconds. Thompson's time in the final was only 0.02 of a second slower than what he posted at Jamaican Trials earlier this summer. That blistering 9.77 second showing seemed a clear indication he would end up on the podium in Paris. I'm going to be disappointed, but I'm super happy and grateful at the same time, Thompson said. I just got to take it as what it is and just move forward from here. It appeared Thompson was leading for much of the sprint until Lyles bolted in across the final 10 meters. Even then, it seemed evident the race was heading toward a thrilling photo finish. I wasn't patient enough with my speed myself, Thompson said. I didn't see anybody trying to get on the field, but I was wondering what we were waiting for, not gonna lie. But in the meantime, the crowd was just constantly getting more and more hype, so I, you know, it didn't feel like it was completely dead. I guess we didn't see none. All right, right here in the back. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, after the race, I came up, we were waiting for uh, the names to pop up, and I'm gonna be honest, I came over, I was like, I think you got that one big dog. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he was out there in lane four, and I was in lane seven, and I couldn't really see what was going on over there, so I just had to keep, you know, running like I was gonna win it, and, you know, something said I need to lean, and I was like, I'm gonna lean, because, you know, it was that type of race, and it was crazy as my, you know, by Ralph Mann was like, before I left for the Paris, he was like, this is how close first and second is going to be away from each other, and I can't believe how right he was. During the semi-final round an hour and a half, -er, Seville had history with Lyles, having faced him in the Bahamas in June. Seville won it, sneaking just past Lyles in 9.82 seconds. Lyles finished forward, Lyles said. I knew that when the time came for me to be able to say, this is the final, this is where I need to put it together, I was going to do it. Everybody knows that the title goes to the Olympic champion and the world champion, Lyle Said last week, which I am one of, and soon to be another one of. Those words prove to be prophetic. Lyles will now turn his focus on the 200 meters. He said his dream goal is to break Usain Bolt's world record of 1919 and the 4x100 meters relay. It remains up in the air about whether he will be part of the 4x400 meters relay, but he was a part of the silver medal winning team at this year's World Indoor Championships. In an interview with Fox News Digital in March, Lyle said a friend told him, forget three, you need to go after four. Do something no one's ever done. When you want to talk about being the greatest, that's what you have to achieve. So I announced that that is a goal of mine to complete. Why not do it on the biggest stage, the Olympics? Lyle said of a potential fourth Olympic event. Track legend Carl Lewis recently told Fox News Digital that the sport needs Lyles to dominate these games. Really exciting. I think it's exciting for the sport. I think the sport needs someone like him that's a champion. I mean, he's the defending champion. He's the fastest man in the world right now. And we need someone to grab onto. And I think he's a perfect kind of guy that can do that. And I'm excited about it. I think track does better when we do have a superstar. That's why mm -hmm. if Noah was able to win, it, I think he would elevate the sport as well. because. As opposed to saying, I wonder who's going to win, people want to say, I want him or I don't want him. <laughs> you know, they want to root for someone or root against someone. And when they're rooting against them, they're rooting with their guy. They're doing that now. But I think it creates more intensity when you have someone that dominates. And that's been throughout history. Jesse Owens, way back into those days, and Charlie Paddock in the 20s, and all the way through, uh, people have really gravitated to the sport when someone actually dominates. One down, at least two to go.